Welcome to Gentle Restorative. My name is Sandra, and I would love for you to just start by closing your eyes. Doesn't matter if you're laying down or if you're seated. Ah, just take a couple of deep breaths to invite in peace. And then a really strong inhale through the nose. Loud exhale. And just letting the body settle into your space. You know, in our live classes, we always chant Shanti. It's a little harder on Zoom. Um, but the reason you chant Shanti three times, Shanti means peace in Sanskrit. And it's for peace of body peace of speech, and peace of mind. And I really want to focus on that peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, not P-I-E-C-E, -E, peace of speech. Um, I feel like today's theme is about, oh, the new horrifying external uprising that has befallen our country. And so, Today's theme is about the loving kindness meditation, meta, um, sending peace to those who need us to send positive energy. And then it's kind of, I thought about moving forward with um, perhaps not sitting by. Um, I don't know about you, I've just had enough. And I guess um, I've come to realize in the past couple of days that just because I extend love to everybody, it, it isn't enough, it's time to stand up. So this meta, uh, meditation, you know, it doesn't have to be how you read it in the books. It doesn't have to be something you have to memorize. You can change the words. You can adapt the words if you're of a different culture. You can make it what you need it to be, but the premise stays the same. And that's what we're gonna work through on the mat uh, this morning. What is this? meta meditation about as well as I do want to back it up by drawing your attention to multiple studies that have been done to the benefits of a loving kindness meditation and how this meditation can uh, decrease bias. So it starts with you. So I need you to tune inward. Invite peace into your heart center. If there's anything you have been feeling judgmental about towards yourself, this is the time we've got to let it go. Because when we are trying to extend peace towards others, it's, it's very challenging when you're coming from a place of self-judgment, even from self-hatred, we need to let that go. We are here to make peace with ourselves. I need you to breathe in love and light. See that light filling the lungs, filling the body. Exhale that light back out so it surrounds you. And when we surround our own space with light, well, then we're able to push it outward. We're able to extend those boundaries so that it can reach other people as well. Nice deep inhale. Big exhale. Extend that light around you. Inhale. Take the arms up. Bring the palms together and exhale them to your heart. Set a strong intention this morning. Keep it positively worded. Make sure that everything you direct to other people is also directed towards yourself. And when you're ready, you'll release your hands. So remember when we started out, I said I, it didn't matter if you were laying down or sitting up. So if you're laying down, could you come to a seated position? We're gonna turn the hands down on the knees so we can find our seated cat cow, which is simply lengthening, creating a little arch in the spine, and then 
Ah, exhale, round it out, drop the chin. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, round it out. Keep going. Two more times. Just working out some kinks in the spine. And then sitting back up nice and tall. So from here, let's stretch it out a little. Let's send that right leg forward, left foot's tucked in. Find your length. I just want you to stay right here. I'm actively pushing the back of that right leg down. Don't lock the knee. But you know what? Just that consciousness of pushing the leg down can be enough to get a stretch going. So while you're doing that, now I want you to visualize taking a line of energy from the right hip all the way down the leg. So let that leg move forward, stretch out through the sole of that foot. I'm not implying that the hip should actually move forward. You actually want to slide that right hip back so the hips stay level, but extend out through the leg. How much longer can it grow? Perfect, now inhale, take the arms up, hinge forward. Let's find the first fold of the day right here. Play around, work your way into it. So this meditation is known throughout the world. Um, it's a meta meditation. Meta is not a Sanskrit word, it's a Pali word, uh, meaning loving kindness. And the whole premise of this meditation is to extend loving kindness in stages. Um, I'm sure you can think of somebody in your life who you would find it very difficult to send loving and kind thoughts to. Uh, perhaps they've done you wrong. They um, rub you the wrong way. But we can take this in stages so we get to this place where maybe it is okay to send loving thoughts to those people too. Um, without it feeling like it's violating our inner truth. And that is one reason I, I said I wanted you to let go of self-judgment or self-hatred because, wow, we need to offer that loving kindness to our inner truth. We do the best we can with the knowledge we have at the time, but it's time to move forward and learn from that. And we can extend our compassion outside of our personal space, right? And you sink just a tad deeper here. Settle in. I know it's hard. It's the first bulb. You didn't stretch yet. But can you even sink a little bit deeper? Can you relax the muscles in the right leg as you do so? So as we um, create the space for this loving kindness meditation, it has to also infiltrate what the physical body is doing. We cannot express loving kindness towards ourselves while at the same time our head is going, oh, this stupid hamstring of mine, why won't it let me get any lower? Mm, we don't need that on the mat. We have enough... Um, external stuff being thrown at us on a daily basis. You don't need it coming from the internal self as well. So wherever your fold is, trust me, I know I can't see you, but I know it's perfect. So right here, right now, what I'd like you to say to yourself in your head is, I rock this pose. It suits me perfectly. I wear it well. And then let's slowly make our way back up. That was a long time in our first fold, I get it. 
Go ahead, stretch out the left leg, just shake the legs out a little bit. And then let's bend the knees, plant the feet wider than the hips. We're just gonna windshield wiper the legs for a moment. Let that right leg know we're here for it. Use the breath. And then bring the knees back to center. It's that left leg that's stretching out. We'll fold that right foot and leg down in front. Remember, pull the left hip back, but then focus on gently pushing the back of the thigh down. Close your eyes so you can really feel that. Let the leg lengthen out in front of you. Push through the sole of that foot. Just being here, being present. When you're ready, take the arms up. Lengthen, hinging forward, coming down into the fold. You know, I never just dive right into a fold. I play around, I move. I allow the hamstring to have a conversation with me. I'm acknowledging it. Yeah, I can feel it right here. It's super tight. But you know what? The two of us will work it out. I'm not mad at my leg for being tight this morning. It just is what it is. So let go of that judgment. Push the ego aside. I love this pose. I love how I look in this pose. These are your mantras. Um, I love that I'm on my mat. I love that I got myself out of bed to be on my mat. Whatever it is you need to put out there. And then when you feel you can, just settle into that stretch. Go a little deeper. Try to relax. Again, a little bit deeper. When you're ready, Come on back up, take your time, walk your way up that leg, stretch out the other leg, walk it out. All right, and then let's bend the legs again. Take them a little bit wide, drop the arms in between. This will be fun. We're gonna send the right arm underneath that right leg, left arm underneath the left leg, Wiggle the feet back in towards each other. You still with me? Let's make this option A, especially if you're not feeling super balanced. Um, you know, we are all in our home setting, so make sure there's nothing behind you, like a cocktail table or something that you, if you tip back, you're gonna hit your head on. Kick off, and we're gonna find our balance right here. So let it be fun let it be funny if you end up rolling over that's just part of life we get back up right we're lengthening through the back right we're not rounding out deepening the breath your mantra right now this is fun this is fun All right, so I'm slowly gonna help my legs come back down to earth. Set the feet wide again, right? Keep the arms tucked under the knees. I'm gonna switch directions again. All right, so, you know, this is not gonna be, uh, well, this is not my favorite pose where we're headed, and I'm gonna tell you that honestly and openly, but every pose has a lesson. So 
I need you to take it incrementally and decide what's right for you. Turn the palms down. And then as the legs start to stretch out, they're gonna weigh down on the arms. So you might stay right here. You can even lock in those elbows and use them to support you if you need to. Or we start coming a little lower and we let the legs push down on the forearms, coming down into turtle. So I can't really talk because I can't lift my head here to talk to you guys. But wherever you're at, just allow yourself to explore a little deeper than you normally would. I want you to come out of your comfort zone, but do not go into pain. Like this is a pretty heavy stretch for me. It's not super, I, I don't feel like I'm gritting my teeth. I can still talk to you. I could sing you a song if you really wanted. You should be able to sing something as well. And so just exploring on the mat to get out of this pose, start wiggling the feet back in so you can slide an arm out and then the other. And then we'll just keep the legs wide. We'll end up in Upavista Konasana with the legs in a V. Feel the backs of the legs pushing down. Inhale the arms. Hands to the heart, close your eyes. See that pose was much better over Zoom because no one in my class could throw a block at me. I didn't have to worry about it. Okay, keep your hands at your heart. Feel the thumbs touching the sternum. Reconnect with your intention. Say the following in your head, I offer myself love. I offer myself peace. I have a right to be happy. And I offer myself health. If any of that didn't feel right, it felt like you were making something up, perhaps later you kind of think about that one, focus on it. Why did that one not sit right with you? Okay, let's release the hands, right hand in front, left hand behind. Use the fingertips to push the earth away and then take a twist to the left. So we're still pushing down with the legs, not locking the knees, feet are flexed. And then as I unravel this twist, I'm gonna let my right forearm slide over to the right thigh, inhale that left arm up. Pause here to lengthen the spine, and then let's come down into a side bend. If the right arm is in your way, and in other words, you can come down lower, then let that arm just slide forward. But remember, it doesn't matter where you end up. This is all about you. You already rock the pose. I know you're doing it great, right? You are keeping that top shoulder open though, right? I hope. Breathe, sink a little deeper. Your mantra right now, I look fabulous on my mat. And then let's take that left arm up first so that it can help push us back up. Ah, just set the fingertips on the earth in front of you, close your eyes. Feel the sensation moving through your body. And then follow it as it moves its way out, as the muscles settle back down. Ah, deep breath in. Exhale, take that right hand around behind you. Inhale, push the ground away to find your length. Exhale, twist to the right.
And then when you get to an exhale and you start to release that twist, let the left elbow or forearm settle onto the left thigh. Inhale, the right arm up. Pause here to find that length. And then again, if you're fine here, that arm's just reaching overhead. If you can come down any lower, you're gonna need to let the left arm slide out in front of you. And so anytime that we're holding a pose, sitting in silence, please feel free to engage those mantras of I'm breathing in love, I'm breathing in light, I'm breathing in peace, I have a right to be healthy, I'm breathing in health, whatever you need it to be, as long as it's worded positively, right? And then let's take that right arm up to the ceiling first. Both arms will help guide you back to center. Hands to the earth in front of you. Close your eyes, embrace the sensation, and follow it out of the body. Deep inhale, hold the breath. Loud exhale. And then take the hands under the knees so you can help the legs find their way back in. And I'm just sitting in Sukhasana for a moment so we can find our props here. We are gonna need um, a bolster or anything similar that you have lying around. It's going horizontally across the mat behind me. Um, if you want your blanket or something as a pillow, go ahead and set it out there. We are coming into a supported back bend, so I do always like to caution that if back bends are not good for your body or your head should not be lower than the heart, you really should have something else out there so that the head is more level um, with the back. Or you could always turn your bolster in the other direction and not make this so much about being a back end. So having said all that, I have the bolster pulled right up against my sacrum. I'm gonna slowly lengthen and carefully lean back. The shoulders should not end up on the bolster. And then I'm gonna go ahead and straighten out my legs. If that's not good for you, you can put the legs however you like. I have my arms right now in scarecrow, and I think that's how I'm gonna stay. It feels um kind of feels like an awakening everything's open when you get comfortable close your eyes do keep in mind that when we hold some of these restorative poses you know halfway through the body's starting to maybe not be as content as it was when you first got there absolutely come out of the pose early or you know change it up the way you need it to be. Um, we can't focus on this loving kindness towards ourselves and our body if we are ignoring the body's unhappiness. So I guess what I'm kind of hoping you get from the meta meditation is a newfound ability to relate to others' experiences that we can't or haven't had. We have to find a way to feel that experience and to rise up in our own way to offer whatever we can, whether that is simply setting out intentions, whether it is becoming more proactive, whatever it means to you. Even just sitting in the meditation is not just sitting. It's not doing nothing. It's not inactivity. It is something. Um, 
I wrote down the name of an article for you. I didn't quote it, but I just wanted to share it with you in case you wanted to go back and look it up. It was pretty interesting, and it's from three years ago. It's called Three Ways Mindfulness Can Make You Less Biased. Cognitive biases may be partly to blame for prejudice, and research suggests that mindfulness can help um, correct them. And that is by Jill Suddy, and that's from 2017. And so in her article, she does reference quite a few studies on this meta meditation and mindfulness um, and how it replaces, or maybe displaces is a better word, our preconceived notions that we have about other people. And they might have been taught to us, they might have been slowly, you know, created as habit. But when you come from a place of mindfulness, and especially this meta meditation, we're in a different mind frame. Our brain doesn't automatically jump to assumption. The meta meditation is about reaching out to all sentient beings. Um, we are all sentient being sentient, um, you know, I guess if you were to ask me what's the difference between a sentient being and just saying human being, um, sentient beings typically are not enlightened. They would be continuing the life, death, reincarnation process until they find their way to enlightenment. So um, you would not include Buddha as a sentient being, right? He's enlightened. And so frankly, um, that's almost all of us. And so learning to show compassion, appreciation, love, and light, um, and just well-being to all sentient beings across the planet. Take a couple of deep breaths. Hopefully that supported back bend is feeling really good. Can you feel ah, the front chakras opening up? from perhaps the solar plexus to the heart to even the throat with your head tipped back. These are important chakras to open up in the conversation that we are having right now, especially the throat chakra. You know, to hold back, to not speak up, to not step forward is a stifling of that energy. Having said that, be careful what it is you're opening up about. If you are not expressing kindness, love, and light, perhaps that's a chakra that needs some acknowledgement and some thought put towards it. We want the heart center to open. That's where our compassion is going to stem from. That is where self-love is going to stem from and kindness towards ourselves and others. And then that solar plexus, which is right below the heart chakra, you know, that's about self-esteem and it's about control. And, um, you know, I often say we don't have control over anything except for our reactions. And so perhaps it's time to use some of that control and rise up to help other people um, with their current struggles. This meta meditation is meant to be transformational as well as educational without being, um, I was going to say, without being in your face. You know, when we present to other people maybe the, their faulty thinking or logic, um, the first thing that's going to happen is most likely defensiveness. We get defensive as well when that is presented to us in a um, you are wrong type of way. If we can teach other people to use um, meta meditation as a way of opening up that level of compassion, I think we bypass defensiveness. And so, I don't know, maybe in your way, you can share the meta meditation with somebody who you think has never heard of it or doesn't know it or doesn't realize they can change it. You can change the words. Who um, I was reading a study where they taught this meditation to African Americans and how the results were that it lowered their stress levels. But one of the um, uh, responses that they had to it was that it didn't seem to meet their culture. You can change the meta meditation to meet your culture, to meet your ethnicity, to meet your needs. And I really hope that you take 
away from today's theme that that is totally, gosh, possible is not even the right word. It just is. It just is. Reach out. Take what you need from it. <sighs> Let's go ahead and take each hand to an opposite shoulder, round the shoulders. In fact, pull them away from your mat. Elbows reaching towards the ceiling. And then I'm gonna drop the elbows down towards my chest, lift my head, bring the chin in, and this is how we're gonna slowly get momentum to roll all the way back up. And let's keep the hands here once you're seated. Bring the elbows parallel to the floor. Round out the shoulders and breathe. And then slowly release the arms. We're going to take the shoulders up and back and down. One more time. Perfect. Go ahead and move any props that are on your mat. Let's come on over into table, hands and knees. And, you know, as you carefully set your alignment here, and, you know, it's not a tricky pose, right? So the alignment is not difficult to think about. I do want you to close your eyes and consider what your body needs this morning. Um, how can you incorporate your needs into our sequence, right? If you feel like you really need to arch your back and I'm saying we should do cat, you go to cow pose, right? Really want you to attend to yourself. That's part of this loving kindness meditation. So having said that, Inhale, cow, but go in the opposite direction if you want to. We're going to exhale the cat. You can hold one of those poses. You don't have to transition. Slowly coming back to cow if you want to. And remember, we just came out of a back bend, so you might want to stay in cat. Round it out. Hold it there. Neutral spine. Send that right foot out behind you. Tuck the toes, push into the heel. And then as you bring the weight back into the left knee, sweep the right knee in towards the heart, round the spine, drop the head. So coming through a neutral spine, I'm going to let the right leg sweep out behind you, keeping it bent, and it'll appear as though my foot is holding up the ceiling. I'm trying to keep my hips level, um, and the knees about 90 degrees. Breathe here. On your exhale, that knee's coming back in toward the nose, around the spine. Slowly send, send that back leg out behind you. Keep it bent. And then as I lower the knee, I'm not taking it to the floor. I'm just going to straighten out that right leg to my side in gate pose. Left hand is coming in to thread the needle. And so if you need a prop to catch the left shoulder, or left ear, slide something over if the ground is too far away from you. If this is too hard this morning with the leg out, bring it back in. Remember, you've got to make this what you need. This has to be about you. The sequence has nothing to do with me. I'm just a guide, but um, you're free to go on any path you choose. So you can leave that right hand down in front of you. You could ah, stretch it overhead, which gives you this ability to kind of open that top shoulder, a little bit of a twist here. Instead, you could take that right arm up to the ceiling if you want. You could take it behind your back and then draw the top shoulder back. 
You don't have to do anything. Hmm. So as you happily enjoy this pose, cycle through those mantras. Make them up. If you at all get tired of being here or the bottom shoulder feels like it's taking too much weight, we're heading to child's pose right after this. You are more than welcome to go there right now. Couple more breaths here. And then if that right hand's not in front of you, draw it back in so you have support. Slowly slide that right leg in and push back into Balasana, child's pose. If you feel like you need a prop, grab it. While you're here, let's just say Shanti three times in our minds, that piece of body, piece of speech, piece of mind. When you're ready. We're coming back up into table, setting the alignment, making any changes we need to for our own bodies. Inhale, cow. Take it to cat. Come back to a neutral spine and send that left foot out behind you. Tuck the toes, push into the heel. You stay right there. I'm gonna have to turn around. I won't have room for gate pose. When you're ready, left knee to the nose, round out the spine. We're holding it, but we're still breathing. And then slowly keep that leg bent, but send it out behind you. Try to level out the hips. When you're ready, left knee to the nose. Slowly send that bent leg out behind you. And then as I lower the knee, I'm just going to straighten out that left leg out to the side, plant the foot. Take that right arm, thread it underneath, grab a prop if you need it to rest on. And then again, make whatever changes that you need to. Do whatever you want to with that left arm. And 
When you're situated, close your eyes, go back to your mantras. Make sure you're peaceful in this pose, even if you don't like this pose. And just like on the other side, if you want to come out early, we're heading to child's pose, Balasana. A few more deep breaths here. And when you're ready, slowly make your way to child's pose. When we get to actually going through this particular meta uh, meditation, you can Google, uh, if you like, the benefits of a loving kindness meditation. You're gonna come up with a lot of studies that actually have been done to show how it, the obvious things, it reduces stress, right? Reduces anxiety, but I came across multiple um, studies about how it reduces migraine pain. Um, the benefit list is quite long. And frankly, this meditation could take you five minutes a day. So do you have five minutes? Do you have time to add this into your repertoire? You know, are you someone who, when the alarm goes off, you linger in bed? That's probably five minutes. You've got it right there. It's perfect. Or do you have trouble falling asleep? There's another five minutes. Can you commit? To working this in and seeing what the benefits are to you. Um, be fabulously interesting if you were to do so and, and keep a journal and see what changes evolve. And I'd love to hear what those changes are should you feel um, like you could reach out to me and tell me. I'd love to hear it. A couple more breaths and child's pose. And then when you feel like it, go ahead, push your way back up the table. Tuck the toes. Let's find a downward facing dog right here. Remember that dog is not about getting the heels to the mat. I will tell you, however, if your heels do touch the mat, uh, one adjustment I, I always make when I get here that really feels like it sets this pose for me is an inner rotation of the thighs, outward rotation of the calves, and you'll kind of feel the legs set in, create space between the shoulder blades. And then I want you to lift the heels, round the spine as you come forward into plank. Let's set the knees down to modify, untuck the toes, mini chaturanga, into reverse shavasana. Whew, we've done some challenging poses this morning. 
Close your eyes, especially for restorative class. That kind of worked too. <sighs> but that's good. It puts the mind in a better space to be able to meditate and send out uh, happy thoughts and intentions. And just laying there in reverse Shavasana. Eyes are closed. So typically with a loving kindness meditation, there are five stages. And I think you should take the stages at your leisure. I think maybe if you want to change them up as well as you need, I think that's fair and fine. Um, but I'll tell you typically how the stages go. First, you offer the meditation to yourself. The meditation, um, I've already told you, you can change the words, but typically it sounds something like, may I be happy, may I be peaceful, may I be healthy, may I be loved. It, it usually sounds something like that. You can of course, change the words as you need them. And you visualize feeling all that. You visualize that light around you and that offering to your own self. And, you know, once we've offered to ourselves, then we're in a better place to move towards others. So typically stage two is visualizing somebody that you love and expressing the same towards them. And that should be pretty easy because you're picking somebody you already like, love, get along with. And then the third stage moves to choosing somebody you're neutral towards. Um, it could be like a neighbor you don't really know or um, just, yeah, someone that is more of an acquaintance. And then the fourth stage is typically hard. It's typically picturing somebody you do not like. Um, and trying to send them that same message of compassion. And then in stage five, we visualize sending that to the whole world. Um, I don't know. I just today really want to send it to as many people who are hurting as we can as a collective yogic group. So... We definitely will start with ourselves. We have to get in that state of mind, but I might change up the stages a little bit if you don't mind. Um, if you adopt this meditation in those five minutes, I know you have somewhere, um, then you can change it back, especially if you're a traditionalist and you need that ritual. That's all good. Gosh, I hate to bug you. I know you're in reverse Shavasana. You're not going to want to move, but... It's not quite time for Shavasana yet, so here we go. Ah, so will you please free the arms from underneath your head? You can bring your chin or your forehead to the mat. I'm just keeping my head lifted so I can talk to you. Otherwise, I feel like I'm uh, stifling my voice into the floor. Your hands are coming behind you into yoga mudra. So once you get the fingers to intertwine, pull the shoulders together down and back. Your knuckles are reaching downward for the toes. And then I just want you to keep your head down here. I, I just want you to imagine that I'm gently hanging onto your wrists and I'm pulling down towards your feet just slightly. So I want this lengthening, this beautiful stretch happening. I find this um, pose is easier if you're using the pelvic bone to push down into the ground it kind of protects that low back if you want to you can see if the arms will lift up at all in this position if they don't move at all pull the um, biceps and triceps in towards each other and then from here let's lower the arms back down go ahead and lift the head and shoulders into half locust Deep in the breath. And then slowly come down, free the arms, let them drop down alongside you. Right ear to the mat, relax everything.
Oh, perfect. While we're here, why don't we allow that left foot to pop in a little closer so we can grab it with the left hand, draw the heel in toward the glute. And as always, if this is super easy for you, try to open up the left shoulder, get the left hand on top of the foot so the elbow is pointing up toward the ceiling. That is not going to happen for a lot of us, so don't force the arm to go there if you're barely hanging on to that foot. It's just a little add-on. And then gently release. Turn your head to the other side. And then let that right foot come in for the right hand to grab onto. What I do want you to be careful of, you know, if you can't reach your foot, it's okay. You can reach in the direction of the foot. You might be able to grab on to your yoga pants or your sock if you have one on. Go ahead, release. Bring the head back to center. Um, what makes me cringe a little bit, just out of worry, is to see somebody open out the hip and knee to grab the foot. I just want you to be so careful of the knee. So. I would prefer you stay in alignment and not be able to reach the foot. That's what you have a strap for too. You can always use that to lasso on. All right, having said all that, let's get our hands underneath the shoulders, lift up and do a little cobra. And then we're just gonna push straight back into cat pose. That's a lot of back bending we've done. I really want you to enjoy and embrace rounding out the spine. I promise no more back bends. But the back bends are good symbolically for opening the heart. And if we are talking about sending compassion and loving kindness to people that especially we don't like, um, or whose behaviors and actions we cannot tolerate anymore, we need the heart space to open up. It's hard to do it from a closed space. A couple more breaths right here. Oh, and then can we come into my favorite restorative pose? Grab that bolster, set it down across the mat, bring the hips down on top of it. Oh, this is one of my favorites. It is such a great release for the low back. Just turn your head to one side or the other, close your eyes. Feel the weight of the hips settle into the bolster or pillow or whatever you're using. This is an easy restorative pose to do in bed, right? If you are struggling to sleep. And then just visualizing the space around you, filling that space with light. I often love using a visualization of light because you can give that light any intention that you need it to have. So for me, uh, visualizing light is always a positive energy. It's an offering of healing um, and anything else that we find we need or are lacking. So fill your space with whatever color light you need and set the intention for that light to offer you also specifically what it is you need. Fill in the blanks. I can't tell you that for yourself. Of course, I can throw mantras out there for you to repeat, but I really want you to focus in on what it is you need today. And will you pause to notice, is that light surrounding you like a circle or is it more three-dimensional? Is it going over your back? Is it going underneath your stomach? Does it encase the head and the feet? 
like totally allow yourself to be immersed. It's your light, your intention. Ah, it's only hope and positive uh, attachments to that light. All right. I don't know about you. I could totally stay here for Shavasana. However, I'm going to have you take a deep breath, hold it in. Super loud exhale. And we are gently rising back up. I'm sorry, I'll say that in advance. Maybe more towards me because that's my favorite pose. And then I'm going to slide that bolster out in front of me. My legs are going to go up on top. Grab some type of pillow or neck roll. Okay, I thought I had folded my blanket nicely before we started. Obviously not. Sorry. And then go ahead and lay back. Ah, get yourself super comfy. You might even let the knees fall wide. Um, feet kind of coming in towards each other. Get your pillow exactly how you want it. Um, you know, if, if this today you're struggling from any type of headache, you might want to take a block instead of something soft and comfortable and wedge that right underneath the skull, which I think feels great when you have a headache. Anyway, close your eyes. So as we go through this loving kindness meditation, I don't want my words to be yours. I want you to actually repeat what I say in your head. These need to be your words. You need to feel them resonate with you. And if something doesn't sit right, let it be. For instance, if I say, um, may I be loved, and you are not in a place in your life where you feel worthy of that, say the words anyway. The brain is so powerful and the repetition of the statement will take you to a place that makes it true. Deep inhale through the nose. Loud exhale. So repeating in your head silently after me. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be peaceful. May I be loved. And sitting with that, draw your light back in. Create it however you need it to be. That beautiful healing energy let it surround you envelop you fill you again may i be happy may i be healthy May I be peaceful. May I be loved. And please note that taking care of yourself first is not selfishness. It is taking responsibility and allowing yourself to be a completely filled vessel so that you can offer to others. I want you to imagine somebody you love, somebody who loves you, standing to your right. This doesn't have to be somebody who's still alive. They can have passed on. But it's someone when you think of them, you feel that love 
emanating towards you. So see that person. Hear them telling you, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be peaceful. And may you be loved. And how does that feel coming from someone that you know loves you infinitely? Now let's offer that back. So repeating after me in your head, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be peaceful. May you be loved. I really want you to harness this energy. Let the light grow stronger, let it go brighter, let it start to infiltrate your space. So it's not just around you, it's filling the room. And here's where I wanna change this meditation sequence. Can we bring to mind all of the people who are suffering from I guess I gotta say the word and put it out there, but the virus, in whatever way that might be, it could be financially, it could be emotionally, whatever way. It doesn't even have to be a specific person. It's just this imagining of all these souls who are in pain. And then can you add to it all of our African-American community who is really hurting and needs us to stand up with them and, and almost figuratively and literally hold their hands. We have to put ourselves out there. Can you feel the presence of all of those people? And I know I'm asking you to envision a lot of pain right now and and a lot of sorrow. And if it's too much for you, if you're too empathic, put up a slight shield. But these are the people, the beautiful souls that we've got to send this meta meditation to. So with them in your mind, may you all be happy. May you all be healthy. May you all be peaceful. May you all be loved. Feel those spirits, those souls, accepting your mantra. Feel their love and light back to you. We're all one. Our energy ties us all together. Let that energy be uplifting. Let it become something beautiful. Feel it. Completely surrounded, encased, infiltrated by loving light and sharing it with those who need it. Take a slow, deep breath in. Let everything go, let the vision go, let the words go. Nothing but your body sinking into the mat, coming back to yourself, taking care of yourself. And to do that, Shavasana needs to be all about you. So letting everything else go, settling into your quiet. I'll come back and get you.
focus to your beautiful breath. Allow that loving energy, that light to still be all around you. And I want you now to visualize letting it go. Like letting that light lift up and just dissipate into the environment knowing that it's moving outwards towards people who need that. Sending our loving energy outwards. Ah, take a deep inhale. Cleansing exhale. And move the body however you want to, however you need to. Reawaken cells. Feeling all these beautiful things we invited in, the happiness, the peacefulness, the health, the love, the self-love. And when you feel ready, go ahead and roll to a side in a fetal position. And then gently push your way back up. Deep inhale through the nose. Super loud exhale. Inhale the arms. Reach for the sky. Bring the palms together. And exhale the hands back home to your heart. A commitment, a seal to your intention. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.